And hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to delve deep into Regulation Z today to discuss loan originator compensation rules. And we're, we're experiencing an evolution in this subject right now because currently pending are proposed rules that the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau came out with in August of 2012 that uh, would, would implement some of the Dodd-Frank Act changes to loan originator compensation and make some, some further tweaks. But we're going to focus on some selected compensation issues. We're going to look at what you can do if, if you have a qualified plan, what can you do if you have a non-qualified plan. And there are some thorny issues that are raised by the fact that we are in a period of change. Back in 2009, the Federal Reserve proposed rules on loan originator compensation. Then Dodd-Frank came out. In 2010, the Federal Reserve went ahead and finalized what it had proposed in 2009, but because of the intervening passage of Dodd-Frank, the Federal Reserve said, hey, we know that there will need to be further adjustments to these rules, but we think they're significant and important enough that we need to go ahead and do this first piece. But because of that, we've kind of got some gray areas, um, some of which have been filled by a bulletin from CFPB, some of which aren't. So the key questions are things like, can a bank make a 2012 contribution to a retirement of a loan a retirement plan of a loan originator under the current rule what about under the proposal and do we need to factor the proposal in can a bank pay a profit sharing bonus for 2012 to a loan originator under either the current rule what would happen under the proposal and what about charging discount points if you do it right now, while the rule is still in the proposed stage, you obviously aren't violating the rule because that part hasn't been finalized. But could the regulators come back and say, oh, no, you knew we thought this was slimy. So this is an unfair or deceptive act or practice or abusive act or practice, and or it's a fair lending violation. So... We're going to talk about um, upfront points or fees and the zero zero alternative that you have to offer in certain circumstances. We're going to talk about the restrictions on pooled compensation, profit sharing, and bonus plans for loan originators. And we're going to take a step back for a minute and and look at how we got here with all of this. You know, um, historically, mortgage loan originators had a financial incentive to try to steer consumers into loans that had higher interest rates um, because um, that usually meant greater compensation for the loan originator. And in an ideal world, the, the, that kind of payment and the upfront fees and the higher interest rates would be countered by competitive forces so that a consumer would look at a loan and the, the terms and conditions being offered and they'd say, well, no, that's not working for me. They're charging too much. I don't want to do business with them. But the fact is we don't have complete transparency. It's not an ideal world. And consumers were often confused uh, about who was doing what. For example, if a mortgage broker charged a consumer directly for additional origination points and fees, the consumer would think, 
ah, the mortgage broker is working for me. They didn't know that the the um, loan, the mortgage broker was also being compensated by the creditor. So there have been changes made because the consumer is in a situation where they're making one of the biggest financial decisions of their lives, and Congress and the regulators believe extra protection is warranted. How many mortgage transactions does an average consumer enter into? So they aren't experts in this. So the CFPB has been put in charge of Regulation Z and of coming out with rules to implement this particular part of the Dodd-Frank Act. Over on page three, you see this is part of Regulation Z and the Truth in Lending Act, and it's important to keep that context in mind because if somebody is making a loan that's for a primarily for business purpose, this isn't going to come into play. So if your commercial lender is making a business loan and that's all they do, then they aren't going to be affected by this. The this relates to loans made under the Truth in Lending Act and its implementing regulation, Reg Z. So over on page four, we get, we get an overview. I had mentioned a few minutes ago that back in 2010, the Federal Reserve Board finalized regulations that they proposed in 2009 on loan originator compensation to protect consumers. And there were three major facets of those rules. The first is that it prohibited payments to loan originators, and that included mortgage brokers and loan officers, from being based on the terms or conditions of the transactions, other than it, the uh, compensation could be based on the amount of credit extended. The second facet prohibited double dipping. If the consumer is paying compensation to the loan originator, then the um, loan originator can't be paid compensation by another person. So. So the the consumer can't be paying the loan originator if somebody else is also paying them. That removes the conflict, confusion, removes the conflict of interest. And then the third facet is the anti-steering provisions, and that prohibits a loan originator from steering the consumer to a loan that is not in the consumer's best interest if, in doing so, the loan originator is going to receive a greater compensation. Now, this doesn't apply to all loans under Reg Z. It only applies to closed-in transactions that are secured by a dwelling. And the changes from the uh, 2010 rules began to apply to those closed-in consumer credit transactions secured by a dwelling for which an application was received on or after April 1 of 2011. Now, once those rules were finalized, there started to be a lot of whispers among the Bakers Online community about, hey, have you heard there was a conference call, or we talked to an examiner, and the examiner says that this is going to impact how we do our bonus plans, how we do our profit sharing, how we do uh, contributions to everything from 401Ks on down. But there was nothing in the rule that mentioned that, either either directly or even hinted at it, but when you looked at their logic, it was pretty clear to see that they did have a leg to stand on. But because there was nothing in writing as far as clear-cut guidance, a lot of banks were in a very uncomfortable position. So the CFPB in April of 2012 cleared up some of the confusion through a